Today we're going to have a look at creating an interactive toggle button with a micro interaction. This means that when clicking this button and actually holding down the mouse button, there will be an in-between state that will improve the overall experience and interactivity of this button when actually using it. So first we're going to take the ellipse tool by pressing O and creating an ellipse. It's going to be let's say 130 and um, we're gonna select the ellipse and then add auto layout by pressing shift a we're gonna name this toggle button and we're gonna set a background to this new auto layout also the corners are gonna be rounded 75 and we're gonna make this wider significantly wider than the ellipse it contains let's say 250 also we're gonna decrease these paddings to 8 and turn this into a component by pressing command option key. Now this button will be optimized for dark backgrounds. So we're gonna go here and select kind of a dark color for our project, for our canvas, so that we can simulate the final result better than with a light one. I'm gonna set the background of this white and then adjust the opacity to around this much 14 and then also I'm gonna we're gonna pick a color for the actual button we're gonna also add gradients to the background you know adding these improves the overall look of this it makes it look it adds depth I think I'm gonna also add a yellow color and a radio. We're gonna make this very subtle, almost invisible, just to make, just simulate light, sort of. And we can go ahead and create the variants. All right, so we're gonna go here and click this plus icon to add a variant. This variant is gonna be called pressed. Also, this one is gonna be zero. And then we'll add another one that says one. To move this uh, circle to the right side, we're gonna go here to auto layout and then top right alignment, right? So, and what we also wanna do is create a different color background for the on state. So we're gonna try and find something that looks, that feels active or at least more active than the first state. So I'm turning off, I'm setting the visibility of these gradients to zero in this final state so that they fade out when transitioning. And I think uh, this looks good. So um, I'm just gonna take this, select this color, copy it, and then paste it inside these two. The difference is gonna be that we also have to position them right above the white. This one is gonna be invisible here and here as well. So again, the end result being it's gonna fade in gradually. Right, so um, this in-between state, um, when pressed, so the circle is gonna be in the middle, but also it's gonna be kind of stretched across a little bit, a little bit smaller, no, just stretched. We're gonna set the height of all of these to fix, and then we can adjust. So all of these are gonna be middle instead of top. We're gonna try and see what works. Also, we're gonna just make, so since this is an in-between state, we have this green color that's absent here. And uh, since this is like something in between these two, I would say, let's just make it partially visible. So right here, it's got 24% opacity. So here is gonna be 12, maybe a little bit less. So um, I don't know, seven, right? This, fe this feels as if it's in between. Also, the circle should have approximately similar mass to the remaining two, at least it should be perceived as having uh, such mass. So for example, this looks as if it were, you know, shrunk. We don't want that from approximately the same area. Now we want to set up the interaction. This is the initial state. We're gonna go to prototype and we're gonna click this and drag it over here. And this is gonna say, not on click, but while pressing change to property one press. It's gonna smart animate and it's gonna ease in and it's gonna be very quick. So let's say 100 milliseconds. Um, same here, so you can drag. And then it's not gonna be while pressing, it's gonna be mouse up, mouse up. 
change to property one, smart animate, and it's gonna be ease out. And then we also want to be able to go back. If we went back when clicking this state, and then we wanted to define that when you release the mouse, it's gonna return back here, we have a problem because there will be a conflict. This state is defined as when you release the mouse, it's gonna go to this state. So you're, you cannot have simultaneously defined an interaction going to the first state as well as the third state. So we have to choose. And to solve this problem, we're gonna create another variant. So I'm gonna click and drag while holding down the Alt key. We're gonna remove this interaction and then select this one, drag it over here and say, while pressing change to variant four, we're gonna re rename this variant. We're gonna say uh, press two. Right. So while pressing, it's going to change to this variant. It's going to ease in 100 milliseconds. And then again, we're going to go here and then mouse up, change to property zero, smart animate, ease out 100 milliseconds. So you can see that we've established a sort of circle. So we click and hold, we go here, we release the mouse, we go here. Then again, we click and hold, we go here and then we release we get here so this should be working let's test this i'm just gonna move this so that you can better understand better visualize this you can see that we are going in a circle that's intentional we want to be able to go back and forth right now i'm going to create a screen so f being 1000 by 600 and i'm just going to click and drag this all the way here while also changing the color of this frame to be dark, very dark gray, and setting this up to be called screen. Right, let's see if we got everything right. I'm gonna launch the prototype, and this is the result. When we click and hold, it puts us to this in-between state where when we release, it will lead us to the either on or off state, and it goes back and forth that's thanks to the circle we have established you can also just click it and it does the same thing i think it's quite smooth um, it goes through all these states quickly so you basically don't see the the in-between state you can you can kind of see how how it is being squished and just to make this really even more smooth i would say we could speed up this interaction so let's go for um, not 100 milliseconds but 80 make this 20 percent faster yeah this works all right so this is how you create a toggle button this is how you create a button with micro interactions you have to establish the circular type of interaction where you can kind of go back and forth go in a circle and this is the result this is the interaction we set up I think it looked good. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like. And if you're interested in Figma tutorials and interactive prototypes, definitely check out my channel where I do plenty of tutorials on Figma. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you in the next one.